you know, this is what we really hope for in public policy. Tonight on Idaho News 6, housing advocates celebrate a new report out of Boise State on the effort to end chronic homelessness by taxpayers might also be happy. Plus, how an online school is helping others across the state transition to remote learning. And later in the newscast. I started seeing a lot of girls posting pictures of their feet saying they were getting $20. How a school resource officer says predators are targeting kids online. On air, online, on mobile. This is Idaho News 6. Thanks for joining Idaho News 6. I'm Don Nelson. Our top story at 10 o'clock, just one day, remains in Governor Brad Little's 21-day mandatory stay-at-home order. It's not yet clear if that order will be extended or what an extension might look like. The governor will address the state tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. We'll carry it live right here, as well as on our website and Facebook pages. Almost 1,500 Idaho residents have tested positive for COVID-19, and the virus has killed 39. Blaine County releasing data today showing social distancing is working. As we told you, the communities around Sun Valley had some of the highest per capita infection rates in the country. The area is under even stricter local isolation orders than the rest of the state. Those last through next Sunday, but community spread has largely dropped off. A death at a Boise area nursing care facility shows how easily the virus can spread from person to person. Central District Health Today reported a woman in her 60s died from complications of COVID-19. Avamir Transitional Care and Rehab says an additional 14 staff members and residents have either tested positive or are suspected to be positive. The health department says the facility is being proactive with its response. Blood is in short supply with the number of blood drives canceled and many donors choosing to stay home. At shortage is the last thing area hospitals need when someone is in dire need of surgery. Today, Governor Little modeling the way and continuing his habit of donating blood. It's more important now than ever before because there's all kinds of challenges to our health care system. So, and a lot of people, you know, uh, have been concerned about giving blood and I just want people to know that it's the right thing to do. Experts say you can donate safely right now. Healthy donors are strongly urged to make an appointment at Red Cross Blood Dot org. And the governor's keeping busy. The governor toured Idaho's stockpile of personal protective equipment today. Boxes upon boxes of medical supplies stand at the ready. The governor says he believes we have enough PPE for our health care workers' needs for the next two weeks. But the State Department of Emergency Management says we don't really know the burn rate. Well, we use a system that tracks all the PPE of all the facilities using PPE right now and reporting it to try to determine a burn rate. Once we determine a burn rate, then we can look at what we need to supply the state. The governor says he's working hard to obtain more resources from any legitimate source. He's urging businesses and citizens to donate any gloves, masks, or face shields they might have. A new report by Boise State suggests a big effort by the city of Boise to prevent chronic homelessness, and it's working. And it's saving taxpayers dollars. And but one advocacy group is now also asking that the city do more in light of COVID-19. Our Madeline White has more. You know, this is what we really hope for in public policy. This is the, the holy grail. Some good news out of Ada County today. Literally saving people's lives and saving taxpayer dollars. Uh, what, what more can you ask for? New Path Community Housing saved the community more than $1 million in its first year, according to a report from Boise State University.